What's up, Kyle Gang? Welcome back to some dynamics. I mean, s mechanics, right? We're doing mechanics today. Okay, so we have this pretty complex problem here. We're given this column of s concrete, and then there's eight steel rods in that concrete, and then we're applying a 200 kip force to all of that. And then, so yeah, you can kind of see what's happening here, right? We have the eight steel rods on top, and they all cut down through. Now, our goal is to find the average normal stress in the concrete and in each rod. So let's go ahead and get started. Right, so there's going to be a couple things we need to do for this, right? Uh, one of those is let's find the sum of the forces, right? So we know uh, some of the forces is equal to zero because we're at equilibrium. So let's add them up, right? Well, we have that negative 200 kip pushing down. But then, uh, if we were to draw it in our force body diagram, we don't really need one for this question. It's pretty easy to visualize what's happening. But the concrete is going to be pushing back up, and those steel rods are going to be pushing back up against that force. So it's going to be plus. Uh, force the concrete, but then also plus eight times the force of each steel rod. All right, so I'm gonna label it S for steel, C for concrete. So we have eight steel rods, so I need to put that eight there. So really quick, let's calculate the area for each one of these. So let's do the area of the steel rod, right? So we know that the radius, or the diameter is an inch, so it's just gonna be pi over four, right, diameter squared. Uh, which is going to be 1. So we know that the area of each steel rod is pi over 4 inches squared. So now if we want to find the, uh, the area of the concrete, which we do, we're going to take, uh, we know the radius of all of this is 4 inches, so we're going to take pi radius squared, so it's going to be 4 squared pi, but we need to subtract it from all the steel that's in there. So we know there's 8 steel rods, so we're going to take minus 8, and each steel rod is pi over 4 inches squared. So we're going to get 16 minus 2 pi, and we're just going to get the area of the concrete as 4 chi pi. All right, so those are two numbers we need. Now let's think about displacement, right? So that's kind of what we're doing in mechanics, right? If we push down on this here, we know we're going to get shrinkage a little bit. It's going to shrink a little bit. We don't know how much that's going to be, right? I guess we could calculate it later. But one thing we do know for sure is that however much the concrete shrinks, the steel also has to shrink the same amount, right? So we know that the displacement of the concrete is going to be equal to the displacement of the steel. And that's going to be a very powerful tool because we don't need to know what the actual displacement is. We just know they're going to be equal to each other. So let's, let's write out what they are, right? So PL over AE. So this is the force of concrete times length of concrete, which is three feet, of course, over the area of the concrete, over the uh, modulus of elasticity of the concrete. And this is going to be equal to the force of the steel times the length of the steel, which is 3. Area of the steel, hundreds of elasticity of the steel. So right away, these 3s are going to cancel. Pretty easy to tell. And then we just have to plug in everything else we know. Uh, so let's do that, right? So bringing that down, force of the concrete is equal to area of the concrete. We calculated that to be 14 pi. And then the modulus of elasticity of the concrete, 4.20. Now I'm not going to add that 10 to the third because there's going to be 10 to the third on the other side, so it's not really necessary. So we know that then the force of the steel is equal to the area, so pi over 4. And then modulus of elasticity, 29. Okay, so what we can do is we can multiply this over and do some math. And this is going to bring you to that the force of steel is equal to 0 0.123 times that of the force of the concrete. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that sum of the forces equation, right? Let's bring this down here. So let's move the 200 to the other side. So it's going to be 200 is equal to force of the concrete plus 8 times the force of the steel. But we know the force of the steel is 0 0.123 force of the concrete. So now we just have one equation and one unknown, right? So pretty simple. From here, we're just going to solve for force of concrete. This gives us that the force of the concrete is equal to 100.69 kip. Right? Then if we do it for the steel, all we have to do is take this number and plug it back into this equation. It'll give us force of the steel is equal to 12.41 kip. So each steel rod has 12.41 kip on it, and then the concrete has 100 kip on it. So now all we need to do is find the uh, normal stress, which is pretty easy, right? Uh, so normal stress, uh, I'm coming over here. So normal stress of the concrete is equal to the force of the concrete, 100 and 69 over the area of the concrete, 
found that to be 14 pi, right? So we do the math on this. This is 2.29 KSI. So that's for our concrete. For steel, we're gonna take the force of the steel, so this is 12.41, divided by the area, which is pi over four, right? So then, do the math on this, get that the thing of the steel is 15.8 KSI. And there are two answers to this problem. All right, not too tricky, huh? Uh, it's just about, you know, not getting overwhelmed when you see the problem and there's a lot going on. It's really just a simple breaking it down into parts question. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to check out my playlist, check out my channel, uh, leave a question in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.